Tiny House Prepper. Hey everybody, I'm Bill with Tiny House Prepper and I recently announced that I'm going to start a series on how to make and upload YouTube videos and how to build a YouTube channel. Not that I'm an expert at all of this, but I've <clears throat> been doing it a few years and we've built a relatively successful channel, so I will try to impart to you the things that I do know. And that just starts with cameras. I guess that's the basic place to start. What kind of camera to use to shoot YouTube videos. I think a lot of people get hung up on this right from the very beginning, think you ha thinking you have to have all kinds of expensive equipment. That's not the case. In fact, you probably even have something right now that you can shoot video with, and that's just simply your cell phone. I know many people who that's their only camera, and that's they've built a channel with that. But uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that. <clears throat> So let's look a little bit at the cameras that I have. This is not going to be a complete review of the best uh, cameras to use for shooting videos. This is just going to simply be a, a, a review of the cameras that we use. And even there, it's not going to be an in-depth review of each camera. I just want to kind of give you an overview of, of everything that we're doing. When we first started our YouTube channel, we had a little camera a little video camera that was similar to this just a little handheld thing it had a screen pop open screen i don't even remember what the brand was when we started the the camera itself was already about 10 years old and it worked fine but it wasn't even hd if you look at some of my earliest videos they aren't even shot in hd and i used that for quite a long time and then i started to have a problem with the plug where you plug it in to charge it, the plug got loose and it couldn't make a connection. I couldn't charge it anymore. So I went out and bought this one. This is a Samsung. And in fact, I was just looking on here. I can't even find a model number. But this cost me about $225 in that range. And this actually did everything that I needed to do. And I really liked it. Um, I don't do a whole lot of fan, really fancy, uh, you know, video techniques. Basically, I just need something that has zoom. It's got to have um, <clears throat> time lapse. Yeah, my brain. It's got to have time lapse, and <clears throat> pretty much all cameras are, are auto uh, now. But I also want to be able to go onto a manual mode to adjust. The exposure, in case someone is backlit in front of a window or something like that, they would end up just being a, a silhouette. And you have to be able to adjust that, the lighting, so that they're no longer a silhouette. So those three things, manual, uh, adjustment of the exposure, zoom, and time lapse. And this did all of those. And this is small. It's easy to use, easy to carry. This still works. It still shoots video, but the screen stopped working and there's no viewfinder that you can look through because it's small you can only use the screen and without the screen it's just guesswork as to what you're actually shooting so you can shoot the video you can't see it until you download it into your computer and that just wasn't workable so i had this i don't know about a year and a half or so and the screen quit working and i don't know why so i had to go find something else so I thought, you know, I'm really getting in seriously into this a lot more than I thought I would. So I'm going to go buy a better camera. So I did a little bit of research and I ended up buying this one. This is a Canon and it is a Vixia <clears throat> HF G20. This one's got a screen here where you can see and then it's also got a viewfinder. I can't use the viewfinder because my eyesight, I just, it doesn't work for me. So I use the, the, uh, the screen all the time. Now this one does a whole lot more than this. It's got all kinds of really, really neat features. And you know what? I don't use any of them. <laughs> I don't even know how to use most of them. I would have to go to the manual to figure out how to use most of them. I usually just use the, the same three main features I talked about on the other one. You know, the, the zoom, the uh, <clears throat> time exposure, and the manual adjustment for lighting. And that's it. All the extra stuff I don't even use. This cost me about 800 bucks. Now, after I bought it, I discovered something about this that I really don't like. And I didn't know it until I bought it. 
this creates the f the videos in a file that's .mts extension. There's nothing in my computer that can read that. And so they actually sent a disk with with it where I would I had to use the disk to download a special program, a video editor program that will read the the .mts that's in here. All it does is add an extra step because I have to download this into that program and then after it's there I have to use that program to render it into mp4 or any of the other uh, you know uh, file extensions that I use so that I can put it into the software editing program that I have the only thing that does well there's two things that that does one is it adds an extra step and it can add an extra hour or so or more just to render from .mts to mp4. That's a pain in the neck. The other problem is if you don't have the software, the video uh, editing software that comes with this, if you don't have it in your computer, there's no way to download this, uh, the, the, the files that you shoot, into your computer. Now, I also have another computer, and it does not have a a disc, you know, a DVD or CD reader, so I can't even use the disc they sent to download that into my computer. So I'm going to have to try to go online and see if there's some way I can find that and, and load it from online. But as of right now, I can't use this on anybody else's computer. I can only use it on mine. I hate that. And I had, had I known that ahead of time, I wouldn't have bought it. My question is, is that the new trend? Are most cameras that way? I don't know. Um, this one shoots in MP4, and when I load it into the computer, I can do whatever I want with it without adding that extra step. So I really like the camera, but I don't use most of the features, and I have that extra step that's a pain in the neck. I really think that had I known all of those negatives about this camera, I wouldn't have bought it. I probably would have just bought another $200 camera like this one instead of an $800 camera that adds all those extra steps. This one is small enough. It's easy to hold, it's easy to carry. It's a little bit more um, stealthy. People don't notice it as often. It's small enough that I can put it in my pocket. This one is just a little too large to put in my pocket to carry. So had I known what I know now when I replaced it with this, I probably would have bought another small one like this uh, for 200 bucks or 300 bucks. Yeah, I would prefer to use this one. We also have a GoPro. Now this is the GoPro 5. Uh, they, the, the most current version right now is a GoPro 7. Uh, price is on the GoPro 7. This isn't even available. The 5 isn't even available anymore. I'm just looking at their website. The price on the GoPro 7 is about $400, depending on which version you get. Um, I was really excited when I got this. It's an action cam, it's waterproof, uh, you can do all kinds of things with it. And I was excited because I thought, you know, this is really small, it's easy to carry. This is on a handle that actually floats. <clears throat> if you drop it in the water, it'll turn upside down because the camera's heavier. And it bobs on the water with this orange thing at the surface of the water so you can find it easily. Anyway, I thought, you know, this is really lightweight, easy to carry. It'll be great vlogging uh, camera. This is not going to be a complete review of this camera, okay? But it's got a very wide angle view so I can hold it right here. And even though I can't, there's a screen on the back. And when I'm, um, you know, doing a selfie, I can't see the screen. But it's a wide angle so I can easily just point it at myself and know that I'm going to be in the picture. So I thought this would be a great vlogging video because it's easy to carry. Just stick it in my pocket or whatever. Take it out and just, you know, do whatever I want to do with it. But I discovered that there are some serious problems with this. First, the main thing is that the audio is horrible. Um, the video is great. It takes fabulous pictures, but the audio is sketchy at best. And sometimes it fades in and out to the point where I can't even use it. Um, <clears throat> the first time I really used it was on our trip to Aruba in the pool. And I thought, this is really cool. But here I'll put in a little clip 
so you could see what happened to the audio and I actually had to put in words down below uh, you know so you could even hear and understand what we were saying the audio was so bad so here's that clip So this is your first experience with a snorkel. Absolutely, I've never done that before. That is so cool to be underwater and still breathe. <laughs> well, as much as I can be underwater. But it'd be just under there and I could still breathe and just look all around and swim and it's just so cool. I love that. <laughs> I grew up near the ocean using snorkels a lot. She grew up in Colorado, so she never really had any opportunity to do that except in a pool, which she never did, I guess. So then I decided, well, I'll just get an external mic that I can plug in here. That'll work. So I got a little condenser mic that's a lapel mic, and I put a windsock on it. And the problem is that this kind of plug won't plug in there. You have to get a special adapter, which is this thing. And this has the right kind of plug to go into the GoPro. But then you have this big thing hanging there. And then you plug this into that. And then what I did was I just used a little twist tie to hold that there. And stuck the mic right there. But you got this big thing that's in the way, you know, and it flops around. But here's the main thing. Here's the main problem. You plug this in, and when it works, it works great. The sound is great. Um, of course, this isn't waterproof. You're not going to use it, you know, around the water like that. But the sound is great. The problem was, half the time this wasn't pushed in, or this wasn't pushed in. I don't know. Something where I would do an entire clip, and it would be total silence, just like that. I, there wouldn't be any audio at all. And I tried several times. I tried to make sure every time that I turned the camera on that I would push this in first to make sure everything is there. With this setup, the audio only worked about half the time. So it got to the point where now I'm so frustrated with using this for if, if I'm ever going to say anything that I only use this now for actual action cam, like underwater, um, a bike ride, my son and I took a mountain bike ride, and we used this uh, for the almost the entire thing, and it worked really well, but we didn't say anything. And um, in this parts at the beginning and the end where we did say something, we used a different camera. I'll show you a little bit of the clip here. Um, this has all kinds of really neat uh, mounting harnesses and all kinds of things. We actually used the gimbal, which I'll show you in a minute. And I had that in the gimbal, and then I had a harness that attached the gimbal to my chest so that I could ride the bike, and the, and the gimbal made it nice and smooth as I was riding down the trail. It was fabulous to, uh, in that application. I really enjoyed it. But that's about the only time I can use it. And you'll see here in this little clip right at the beginning, you can see the camera uh, mounted to my chest. Hey, everybody. I'm Bill with Tiny House Prepper. I'm here with my son Barry and I'm very excited because we are going to do something that I haven't done in a long time but I love to do. We're going to go do some really serious mountain biking. Now the Gimbal 5 is completely waterproof in itself as the, just the camera. The older models you had to actually put it in a glass or a plastic case to make it waterproof, but this is waterproof in itself. I'm assuming that Hero 6 and Hero 7, the newer models, are also the same way. And that's good news, but there's kind of a problem with that too. There's a little trap door or flap here on the side that you have to lift up. 
um, I just turned it on. <laughs> you have to lift that up to plug it in, to charge it, or to download it, that sort of thing. And that's kind of a pain. But I want to show you the gimbal. In order to put this in the gimbal, you have to actually take this little thing off because it's in the way. And then you have this little tab thing. If you lose this, it's no longer waterproof. That's a serious concern for me. I have a little, uh, a little pouch here, a little pocket in my camera case that I put this in immediately all the time so that I don't lose it. But that to me is a very vulnerable thing. And you just snap it back on to be able to make it waterproof again. But you got to take it off to put it in the gimbal. See, so here's the gimbal. And right in there, there are a couple of prongs sticking out that have to go into here so that you can control the camera with the buttons on the gimbal. So you have to take that door off, that flap off, and then slide this in here and make sure that it makes contact. And that's how you put it into the gimbal. Now this gimbal is, is an amazing little tool. It's really cool. I really like it in the right application. It holds your camera steady. When I turn it on, watch what happens. It'll hold your camera steady there no matter how you turn it. It's going to keep it the same way. It gets rid of shake. It uh, makes it real smooth. And that's really nice. Let me turn it off here. As you can see on the video that we did um, mountain biking with my son, that was a really rough trail and we were riding the bikes and if I had just had a camera mounted on the handlebar, it would have been really rough. Uh, but this gimbal and then mounted on a chest harness to where it was right here, the gimbal hold the, held the camera steady. It was beautiful. The problem is that with the gimbal, there is absolutely no audio at all. We used it, the first time I used this, I thought, this is cool, I'm gonna use it for, for my vlogging camera and it'll be nice and smooth and all that. And Elizabeth and I, when we were in Aruba, we went into a restaurant and we were talking and using this. When I downloaded it, I found out that, that the sound, the audio, it just went shh. That's all you could hear, just a hiss. There's no audio at all when you use the gimbal. So, in the right application for an action cam, fabulous camera, for anything else, <laughs> basically, don't waste your money. Uh, the camera cost me about 400 I think, and the gimbal was another 300 plus shipping and tax and all that, and a few uh, of the mounting things, extra mounting things that I got. I spent like close to $900 on all of this, and I very rarely ever use it. Now, GoPro has a whole variety of different kinds of mounting hardware and things to hold it and carry it. A lot of this stuff is really cool, really ingenious. Like I already showed you this one, which floats, so you don't have to worry about dropping it in 30 feet of water. It will bob to the top. This is another one that I like. This folds up to also be able to easily use like a vlogging thing. But uh, there's a thing in the bottom that you unscrew, turn it over, and it turns into a tripod, a little tripod. Also, it opens up like this to be able to use as a selfie stick. So, you know, that, that works really well. And then, of course, the helmet gear. This harness right here, where you can mount it on your head like this. When Elizabeth and I went to Aruba, I showed you a clip in the pool uh, but also while I was there me and a bunch of friends rented a bunch of ATVs and we spent a day touring the, the island of Aruba and I took this and I mounted it on top of my uh, my helmet on the ATV and it got fabulous shots of our entire day that I never would have been able to do if I didn't have a GoPro um, and I'll show you just a, a little clip here. Now at this point we left the pavement and we went on to the dirt and it was probably at least the next 10 or 12 miles was on dirt and that was so much fun. I was sorry when the dirt was over. Now 
Now at this point, the dirt road opened up into a great big area the size of several football fields that was just dirt here. And all the guys were having so much fun doing power slides and donuts and everything else. And all the ladies just sat around on their ATVs watching us. It was kind of funny. We were all like a bunch of little kids. So I'm really glad that I have this, but it's very specialized. If you're just looking for a general use camera, I do not recommend it. But if you expect to be doing any kind of um, action cam type stuff, adventure type stuff, then it's definitely a good thing. Elizabeth and I will be going to Panama in a few months, and we I, I'll be glad to have it because I expect to be doing a lot of, if not scuba diving, then at least snorkeling, that sort of thing. And uh, so I'll be using it a lot down there. So I've showed you the two different cameras that I have, the one that doesn't work anymore, and the new one, the Canon, and the GoPro. So what is the best camera to use? Well, the best camera to use is the one that you have with you. And for most people, even if you have all these expensive cameras, for most people, the camera that you have with you all the time is just simply your cell phone. In fact, for this whole video so far, that's what I've been um, using right there is my cell phone. So now I got to switch and use a different camera so I can talk about the cell phone. So I have switched cameras and I'm now using my big Canon so I can show you the cell phone. I know of people who have built an entire channel using nothing but their cell phone so it definitely works. Um, cell phones generally have really great video. The pictures are really good, high def, they're really nice. Uh, the issue that I have with this cell phone is the sound. And if you are using the cell phone, then you need to understand this. If you're doing a selfie, you're holding it here, and the camera is pointing toward you, and the microphone is pointing toward you, then the sound, the audio, is fine. But if you turn it around the other way so that you're taking the shot of a, a scenery, or you're shooting somebody else and they're talking to you, as soon as you hit that button to turn the camera around to face the other direction, it also turns the microphone around and it uses the microphone here. So what that means is that if I'm doing a video, I mean a, a shot of a scenery or something like that, and I start talking, my voice is going to be very muffled and quiet because the microphone is pointing the other way. And if I'm talking to somebody, it'll pick them up very loud, and every time I say something, it'll only be about half the volume because my, the microphone is pointing the wrong way. So just be aware of that, that depending on which way you have the camera going, the, ca the, the microphone points the same way and it doesn't pick up as well if you're behind it. So many times in the editing process I have to chop up the clip and each time I speak I have to boost the volume and then another person speaks and I bring the volume back down again and that's kind of a pain. But just be aware of it, okay? Another thing is don't ever, ever shoot with your camera this way. You always want to hold it this way. When you hold the camera up and down, this is what you get. And a lot of people do this, and I see a lot of YouTube videos like this, and it drives me nuts. I can't stand this. I f it makes me feel claustrophobic. All you have to do is turn the camera sideways, and then this is what you get. This is the same camera, I just turned it the other way before I hit the button. Now, notice that whatever orientation it is when you uh, first push the button, it's going to stay that way. So if you try it one way and then you turn it like that, it's not going to work. You have to stop it and then turn the orientation that you want and then it will um, stay in that orientation during the whole recording. So I start the wrong way. This is up and down. And, oh, gee, I started the wrong way, so let's turn it. Doesn't work. You have to stop it and restart it. Now, remember the three things that I told you that I look for in a camera? Um, zoom, time exposure, and manual adjustments. This is an iPhone. I don't know about other phones, but in an iPhone, you can do all of those things. Let me show you. To zoom in, you just spread your fingers apart and it'll zoom. 
bring them back together and it zooms out again for time I mean for uh, changing the lighting you just press and hold your finger and this little thing will show up it's got a sun like a sun on there and then you can slide it to change the exposure so if you're doing someone shooting someone in front of a window and they're a silhouette you can just adjust the exposure a little bit so that you can see their face the other thing is that over here it's got slow motion it's also got time lapse so those are all of the features that I look for in a camera and they're all right here on my iPhone okay tripods <clears throat> tripods are very important and I think that that's one of the biggest mistakes that a new youtuber makes is they don't have a tripod they try to handhold everything and many times they end up very shaky like this and it just to watch something like that really drives me crazy in fact I have trouble holding it steady as much as I try I always get a little bit of shake and it always drives me crazy so we use tripods whenever we can this entire video almost this entire video except this shot has been on a tripod we have two different tripods that we use here's our big one and it folds up into a pretty small package but it'll stretch out about almost six feet tall or five and a half feet tall so that's the one that we use most of the time we also have this smaller tripod and I actually use this a lot I really like this see it opens up into a tripod but it's infinitely bendable all the legs can be bent around it's easily strong enough to hold my heavy camera my bigger camera you can also mount it a, a uh, cell phone on here and as you can see because of the way the legs bend you can bend them all around and mount them just about anywhere on a railing on a tree wherever you want to do it also <clears throat> if you're shooting something it's much easier to hold something like this much easier to hold it steady than if you were just holding the camera without that so I use it a lot like this to help me shoot hold more steady but also you can turn it around and use it very easily as a selfie stick to get it further away so that you're not right up at the camera so this is a very very useful tool <clears throat> um, it's by Joby J-O-B-Y you might be able to get it online I just got it at Best Buy. Very highly recommend this this tripod. And of course, the basic selfie stick. This does basically the same as this one as far as the selfie stick, but this is much lighter. Of course, it's not a tripod, but you can once again use it to hold your camera if you're shooting away from you. Or this one, you twist it and extend it, and then you can bend your camera toward you to do a selfie shot and this actually like I said gets your gets you further away so you're not all nose in the camera and uh, this is just a basic tool that's very useful you can get a variety of different kinds of selfie sticks online or at Best Buy or Walmart uh, there's all different kinds just look for one that you like selfie stick important use important tool all right, so I have a fair amount of equipment here, and when we're traveling, when we're going someplace, how do I carry it all? Well, I found this nifty little backpack that fits everything, and in fact, as long as I'm careful with it, I can even carry my big uh, tripod strapped to the side of the pack, and this is a perfect solution for me. So this pack is called a Low Pro, and once again, I bought it at uh, Best Buy, and it really works well. It has a, a zipper pocket here, Elizabeth and I actually fly quite a bit and I can just use this as a carry-on to bring my camera with me and I put my passport and tickets and stuff right there works very well when I open it up you can see that I have my smaller tripod here this is the charging cord for my big Canon camera the Canon is here um, <clears throat> the GoPro is tucked in this little slot right here just tucks right down in there here's the gimbal for the GoPro all padded 
This section is a lot like this goes on the uh, on the Canon. And then a lot of the mounting hardware for the GoPro. This is a head harness, selfie stick, that sort of thing. In this pocket, I have a bunch of, you know, wires for charging the GoPro and smaller GoPro tools. This is a little tripod for the GoPro, things like that. So I have everything that I need for my GoPro and my Canon. And of course, I always have my cell phone in my pocket. So basically, I can travel everywhere that I go with all three of my recording equipment pieces, the can two cameras and the cell phone, right in this one little pack. And then I can also, like I said, carry the larger tripod on this strap as long as I'm careful with it. And it just works very well, very concise. I really like it. So if you want to get into making YouTube videos and you don't have any equipment and you feel like that's holding you back, never fear. If you've got a cell phone, if you've got a smartphone, any brand that'll take a video, you can do it. Like I said, I've known people who have done entire videos or entire YouTube channels just with this. It's also, I'm going to have a different video talking about the editing that I do and the editing software that I use. It's possible to get apps on your phone where you can where you can do editing of videos. You can't do any real fancy stuff, but you can edit clips together and all that to make it into one video. And I've known of some people who have built entire channels without even a computer. Just they shoot on the on the phone and then they use the edit one of their editing apps on their phone and then you can upload directly to YouTube. Uh, I wouldn't recommend relying just on that to build an entire channel but you can certainly get started that way and then as you build then you can go from there so there you go that's all of our camera equipment and our tripods and that sort of thing there's a few more things that i would like to get i would love to have a drone but you know right now for just just living here in our tiny house and not traveling much we don't really have much use for a drone but if you watch our channel at all you know that we've recently bought an rv travel trailer besides the one that we live in, that we hope to start using and do more extended trips. And for, for that, I would love to have a drone. But that's a little ways down the road. And you know, I watch a lot of YouTube channels and a lot of people talk about their equipment and many of them have a vastly more equipment than I do. And then, like I said, some of them just use a cell phone. So it just depends on how much you want to get into it. If you're worried about equipment and you want to start uh, filming, you want to start uploading videos, don't worry about the equipment. If you've got a cell phone, start with that and go on from there. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this has been helpful to you. My next video in this series, how to make a YouTube video and upload, I will be talking about the editing software that I use and I'll show you a little bit more about that. So if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe so that you get notification when that next video comes out probably next week. And in the meantime, you be blessed. Talk to you later.